Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Initiative Order and our one shot of Masks and New Generation Society of Sabres. I, Arclight Court, will be acting as the presence or game master here for the game. And I am joined with this wonderful crew and assorted heroes, question mark? Uh, <laughs> and we're gonna go around and introduce everybody. Uh, let's start with uh, going from my right all the way through. Uh, would that mean I have to be the one to start? Is that correct? Do yes. It. Ah, uh, <laughs> hello everyone. Uh, welcome in. My name is Andrew J. Alandi. Some of you know me as Duralath on the interwebs uh, as one of the fighting game players for Third Strike, but I'm also a, an avid TTRPG player here. Super excited to have fun and get into this one shot. I know we've been waiting, so uh, I'm gonna shut up now and keep going with it because let's, I'm ready. <laughs> All right, up next, uh, Lauren. I'm Lauren, um, also avid GTRPG player. Uh, mostly I play here on the Initiative Order of very random games that they invite me on. Um, I don't really do much other than that. Recently started painting and yeah, currently up to these shenanigans. Best shenanigans ever though. Um, and then right after that, we have Coral. Hello, friends. My name is Coral Reefer. You can find me over at twitch.tv slash queerventuretime. I'm there all the fucking time. Um, on Mondays, we have our own um, uh, d and uh, game where you actually can see my friend who's sitting on my bed uh, who did my makeup. <laughs> and you can see <laughs> us hang out and, uh, and just be queer. Um, then you'll also be able to catch me here on the initiative order a whole lot more next month with a show that I don't know if we've announced yet. So I'm going to shut up from here. <laughs> Best choice. Tech guy is agreeing. Uh, after <laughs> Coral, we have Royal. Oh, hello. I will also not say anything about said uh, game because uh, I'm on the same uh, game. <laughs> What's up, everybody? I am Lee Royal. Uh, go by Royalty No Why. I am a Twitch streamer. I am also, one of my hats would be actor, stuntman, cosplayer, dancer, entertainer. And uh, I am fairly new to Table Talk RPGs. And uh, if you're wondering who's talking, it's the one without the face. You can't see it right now, but I promise it's going to be worth it. Maybe in the end, we'll see what happens. So yeah, yeah. Alrighty. And then following up after that, we have Dope Monk Shit. Uh, hey guys, I'm Jimmy or Dope Monk Shit on the internet. Uh, first time streamer, super excited, super glad to be welcomed by the initiative order. And I'm ready to be a hero, maybe? question mark and then last but certainly certainly not least Utahime hi guys I'm Utahime um, you can find me at uh, Facebook Instagram and Twitch at Utahime cosplay um, cosplayer and streamer uh, so you can um, check out uh, my social medias for all the things and also too I'm on the Twitters the Twitterverse at Brianna DeCoster um, and I'm going to be playing Kinetic the delinquent if you couldn't tell already so let's get in some, some trouble maybe yeah or not yeah. trouble. i don't know uh. all the trouble all the trouble and i'm arc like court you can find me all over the internet at arc like court uh wonderful to be welcomed in by the initiative order and wrapping up everybody's introductions let's get all of our sponsors announced our first sponsor is session zero clothing creator of some killer tabletop role-playing game streetwear Use code TIO15 for 15% off your order. Our second sponsor is Norse Foundry, the master dice crafters. Use code TIO15 for 15% off your purchase. Third sponsor uh, is from GotDM from Initiative Order as well of Roaming Player Gear. He's crafted a beautiful wooden dice tower dice vault combo. Use code CARNABY, C-A-R-N-A-B-Y-2020 for 20% off your own dice tower. And our friends over at Mithril Armory, who have been providing giveaway items in the Initiative Order streams, check out their new Kickstarter for the Tin Hedrals, a full set of foldable tin dice. 
We would also like to say that we are proud ambassadors of Jasper's Game Day. Jasper's Game Day is a wonderful organization raising funds for suicide prevention and suicide awareness through the tabletop role-playing game community. Please check them out and support them if you can. And I do believe that is everything. Are you guys ready? We're all ready? <laughs> Let's do this. Let's go ahead and jump into Masks and New Generation Society of Sabres. This will now be forever known as your betrayal wig. Yeah. All right, let's jump into this session. We start with issue one, Society of Sabres. The cover of the comic book shows the emblem of the Society of Sabres, a paramilitary super rehabilitation program run by Aegis. Three jet colored swords with blue and silver accents raised from an obsidian circle ringed with silver. The shadows of six beings against the symbol with a pop-up window that reads error 409 conflict detected and small pixelated digital marks accompanying the window turning the cover to the first page we see the first panel it shows a modern dark colored desk soft gray underglow shows the symbol of the society of sabers on the front of the desk the surrounding area is devoid of any kind of adornment or decoration. The floor, a dark ash gray wood and the walls of complementing silver. Other than the desk, there is only one other perceivable item in this room. A glass tube holding what appears to be a uniform of some sort, tattered and weathered cloth of unknown origin with a large cowl-like hood. Move to the next panel, a gray suited figure sits behind the desk masculine facial structure with long silvered hair their bloodshot eyes and silver irises dart side to side as if they're observing something unseen they seem intent focused tactful the next panel shows their hand reach for a button moments before it turns red send the gray sabers in they respond right as the button lights we then see the outlines of a group of seven individuals enter the room. The first face to, uh, to be identified is that of Agent Ryuk, a Korean male in his late 20s, black shoulder length hair worn down, green eyes, a stoic, insightful face, very attentive, but appears pretty much bored with the situation. He greets the person at the other side of the desk, Dean Vostat. Agent Ryuk reporting with the Gray Sabres for an after action report. The Dean looks over the individuals that enters and says, one at a time, your code name and a situational report of your actions during your mission. And so we'll move with Apolaki first. <sighs> Ryuk. Here to do the job. Is it about time? Can we get this over with? Uh, the rest of the team. I mean, come on. You don't expect me to do this alone, right? The the rest of the team is standing just at the the back end of the room. He's just gestured for you to move forward by yourself. All right, then I will definitely move forward as as asked, and just look and just stand there quietly, waiting for an order. Uh, 
the dean looks over at you and says, this is an after action report. I need to know what happened with you on your first mission. <sighs> your code name and your actions, none of your teammates. <sighs> Look, code name Apalaki. You know who I am. You've, you've heard my family's legacy. You know who we are. You know the police folks. You know my father, Bethala. You know I shouldn't even be here. But whatever. Do you want to hear what happened? It was a blur. Let's let's call it that. But one of the one of our one of, one of the thieves. I don't. I couldn't even tell who it was. They attacked one of ours. All I could tell you was we banded together. We supported each other, and we made sure we got the job done. Thank you. And the the almost like a camera panning up as you were explaining everything that took place and it stops with the panel looking directly in your face. Go ahead and describe your character to everybody. Well, my character is suited in the, the standard uh, black outfit of the uh, of the grace or in the standard outfit of the gray sabers. Uh, the hair is definitely longer with the red headband tied around the hair, uh, kind of mimicking the the Filipino god that uh, Apalaki comes from. Uh, Apalaki, real name Zandar Palisok, is the member of a famous family of heroes who are known for their weapons mastery, athletic perfection, and uh, homes and deduction. They're usually relied upon to uh, go through many, many a many a, a case and solve it. Usually uh, formed as leaders. Apalaki is about five foot eleven. Uh, weighs in at about 190 pounds so slight muscular build he usually carries a bow with him and a sword uh, and various other gadgets to get the job done uh, as far as his demeanor goes he's usually in the face of in the face of uh the word i'm looking for is authority he's usually standing upright and up tall but uh when he's around others he tends to just shy away a bit and maybe not put on an air as much so all righty the dean gestures for you to move back with the rest of your team at the back of the room. Agent Ryuk is standing off to the side from the team. As you walk by, he says, uh, your father is here. You can speak with him after the, the report. He's here? Like, He's when here. did he get here? After the report. <sighs> Agent Ryuk extends a hand over to Nix. Nix, uh, the Dean now gestures for you to come forward. Go ahead and describe your character and give your action report of what happened on the first mission. Well, Nix is about 5'7", very slender, has long lavender hair. Um, her eyes shift colors, so they're never the same color. It kind of looks like clouds go past them. Um, everything about her seems to shimmer slightly as if she's made of moonlight. She's wearing the standard outfit as well. Um, and other than that, I'd say she kind of blends in somehow despite standing out so much. So it's like once you aren't looking at her directly, you kind of forget she's there. Um, so she looks at him and she says, Nix, I personally brought down two buildings and tore up the road. Do you think that this comes from your lack of desire to use your powers or lack of control? I saw one of our members being attacked and I reacted. It could be both of what you said. But which do you believe it is? And I just kind of look at him and give a small shrug. He nods. Thank you. Rejoin your team. The Dean then looks over towards Galaxia and there's a connection not from this world connection between the Dean and yourself, Galaxia. And in your mind, you hear the Dean's voice step forward and as the rest have done, 
so we can all be on the same page and learn together. Um, Galaxia isn't going to step. She's going to float. Um, so uh, you just uh, see this this uh, tall figure with um, long flowing hair that uh, kind of uh, floats behind them a little bit and uh, the ends of their hair. If you were like just looking at it at a glance, you'd think it was frizz, but like if you look at it just a little bit closer, you see that it's purple and blue and sparkling. Um, and uh, so yeah, she, she floats a little bit forward and she rolls her eyes and says like, okay, like I know we can do that, but like, we're in a group here you um hey laxia um i tried to go in and like be all cute and shit and like do a little sneaky and like you know seduce and then knock out and then like shape shift which like usually worked it worked really well in training but like um idk didn't go like exactly the plan and so um um yeah all of our friends talking about like something happened <laughs> that was me <laughs> um um but, um, but I'm here, I'm hanging out, we're fine. Everybody came together, it was good. And we're, and we're, and we're good. Um, do you feel you I would do really... the same, the same thing if something happened with the others? If one of them had made a mistake that you would move the same way they did for you? Galaxia is just like, yeah, hun, I've got so much going on in my brain right now that that, like, kind of just went in one ear and out the other. Like, can we, like, have that chat after I take a nap? Because I almost just died. We will make sure you speak with the doctor before we have that conversation. Thank Great. you. <laughs> and she floats back without, without instruction. <laughs> uh, the dean then motions a hand forward for threshold. He doesn't move. He, he kind of ignores. Uh, I ignore. And I will wait until I am called again. Zion, in this place, we, as a team, do as our teammates do. The other half of your team has approached and given their reports. Please. What did you expect? <laughs> I told you it's a bad idea to send me out. I told you when I came here that I don't need to be out in public. You know, as the son of a, of a supervillain, it's not easy to, to just be out about in the public, okay? Scrawny you know, 19 year old me thinking I can go out there and make a difference. I'm not here to make a difference. I just want to be safe. I just need a place to relax. Okay. Yeah, sure. It was amazing when my powers manifested at 16 and I thought I could do anything, but that's when my mother told me my father would be after me. Imperium is after me. Okay. I don't know if that name weighs anything to you, but it weighs a hell of a lot to me. I want nothing to do with my father. And yet those two years of putting on ourselves on the run with her, it wasn't life for her. So, so we left, I left, okay? And I thought I could live on my own and, and do this on my own, but then he found me. He found me and tried to force me to join him. After denying him, after refusing him, he continued to attack me for a year straight. So I thought I could turn to you guys, you know? I thought it would be safe. And what did you do? You sent me out. 
everything was going according to plan, right? <laughs> you know, we had the bad guy, we, we had the thief, we had him. And then what happened? Fucking sensor shows up, recognizes my electrokinesis, and, and, and it's not too hard to find, you know? I'm the only one with that power right now. So what does he do? He shouts out my name, distracts me, says my father is, is nearby, and I lost control. So there's your fucking report, okay? Your mother is safe. In order to remove yourself from the image that was created by your father and thrown onto you, this was the attempt at that. But there was no way of knowing that sensor would be there or who this assassin had turned out to be in their interactions with you. We did not mean to cause you any harm or any disdain. We we're trying to help you. Sure. Whatever you got to tell yourself. He nods, and you notice it's the same as always. There's almost an emotionless slate to the Dean's face at all times as he then gestures a hand towards Moon, uh, Moonen and says, in your account, I froze. Because of all of them, we're all right. But I fucked up. I own it. Things happen. It won't happen again. Do you believe that you would be able to stand beside other members of your team if they had frozen just as you had? Yes. And we're getting somewhere. We want to describe what your character looks like. Yeah. Oh, wait. Beforehand, threshold. Describe what your character looks like. Yeah, scrawny. Um, he doesn't wear your typical superhero clothes. He he's he re wears the rebellious normal clothing. Um, about five six, and uh. His features, he keeps his self-identity closed because of the fear of being recognized. Um, so he's he's keeps to himself. Awesome. All right, now, Moon, and give us a description of your character. Um, 5'10", um, medium um, build, uh, long hair, but shaved on the sides that's pulled back into like a Viking-style knot. Um, wears the traditional saber um garb and uh are we doing weapons and stuff too or just normal yeah that? whatever weapons or equipment you have on you from that last mission okay yeah he has a shield that he wields from his back pulls it forward and then uh two bearded axes one on his right and left side all right um uh, after you give the the report and the Dean gives his response. He gestures for you to rejoin the rest of your team and then just immediately dead eyes kinetic. You, you can walk if you would like or teleport. And immediately after he says that kinetic basically will teleport to the desk where basically she's laying on her back with her legs kicked up and she basically uses her um what she has on attached to her like cropped hoodie which is like chains that actually have knives on the back of her um that are sheathed towards the back basically one of those basically without her even touching it using her telekinesis comes out and she's using it to pluck underneath her fingernails and then she's just dead panning him 
but like leaning back because wherever he's wherever he is basically her head is like leaning off the table to look at him upside down he looks directly down maintaining that same slated face i eye contact in full effect and both name and situational report of your actions you know damn well what my name is it's kinetic you idiot anyway we did what you guys you morons can't seem to do handle problems for yourselves so you stand in us like your little puppy dogs arf, 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 arf. is that what you want us to do god anyway we did what we had to do and yes oh i use excessive force oh my god i may have cut someone oops you should be grateful and not to mention the fact that what Threshold said was true. You didn't tell us that that fucker would show up. There's no way of knowing everything that happens. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, tell that to my mother who you have locked away, who also was doing your dirty work. Yeah, I saw how that ended. I'm sure we're gonna be treated the same way, whatever. I had nothing to do with what happened with your mother. You all have something to do with it. Very well. It seems that there is emotional turmoil involved with this mission. I would recommend going and speaking with Dr. Valerie Tierson. Receive Stop talking. the medical attention necessary for the members of your team that were injured, as well as any psychological care that may be needed. Thank you for the report. Alexia just okay. chuckles. <laughs> Sully. And she teleports and she stands next to Galaxia and leans against Galaxia's shoulder. Yeah, Galaxia, right after, he was all like, Oh yeah, the doctor's gonna fix your mental problems. Galaxia's just fucking... Gonna take a hell of a lot more than one doctor trip, honey, <laughs> to fix our shit. <laughs> <laughs> Were we just at the same meeting? Can confirm. But <laughs> as you guys reassemble back together at the back of the room, the second page of the issue shows the gathered team of the Grey Sabres um, in all of your wonderful glory. Uh, the next panel shows Agent Ryuk moving over to the desk of the Dean, setting a case file down in front of him, collecting a few uh, what look like cell phones, um, and then stepping back towards the group and then saying, all right, we." We can leave now. Let's get out of here. As he move, motions for you guys to leave the Dean's chambers. As he is doing that oh, at the I desk. I forgot to, at, to give a description. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot. Go for it. Um, so basically, what you would have seen is that kinetic, kind of like what Threshold described, he, she doesn't wear the typical clothing. She's basically, as you could tell, a rebel uh so she has uh she's about five foot eight she's slim she's 18 about 18 years old um she wears this cropped kind of hoodie hooded um uh long sleeve shirt um that actually has chains that of course i was talking about the knives that are sheathed on her back she has like a tank top that's mesh and black and um, pant leggings that are um have are black as well with some leather detailing and combat boots and she has long uh, black coffin nails and she wears dark make darker eyeshadows and dark lipstick and um, she has red tone to her eyes awesome uh, as agent ryuk is kind of trying trying to corral you guys out of the office uh you see the dean sit back in the chair and then like lose focus of the world around them and their their eyes are darting back and forth again like they were just before you guys had entered the room just looking in random random directions random places 
Agent Ryuk moves you guys outside and hands each one of you a cell phone. These will be for me to get in contact with you if needed. I'm the only one who has the information to contact you guys on these. The Dean won't contact you through them. You can give the device to Dr. Tiersen and she can input her information as to where she can get in contact with you. Nobody else will be able to to contact you if you don't want them to, except for, and he turns to you, Apalaki. There's already a message waiting for you on yours. Please don't tell me it's him. It's not him. Okay. As each one of you are handed those phones, start it up, iPhone 12. But oh, it's cute. like baby's first burner phone. Every it's like all of the apps are completely removed. It's almost like it was uh, jailbroken, but there's only the phone calling app and the messaging app on there. And if you click the phone app on there, the only number that's listed in there is Agent Ryuk for all of you, except for Apalaki. Apalaki, when you receive your phone, there is a message on there. The name Eleanor. Top. Uh, uh, a- agent, can do it? Can I? There's already. Can I? Can I have a moment, yes. real quick? Thank yes. you. And uh, Abelak is gonna step to the side. Look, guys, if this will just be a minute. Give me, give me a sec, and uh, I'm gonna attend to the message right now. Alrighty. Uh, the message from Eleanor states. Dad heard something happen. I tried to keep him from getting involved. He's already on his way. Hmm. All right. Uh, Apalaki is just going to message back to Eleanor. Eleanor, for those who are wondering, Eleanor is Apalaki, Xander's older sister, who is also part of the the famous lineage, but had to retire uh, due to a freak accident. Uh, He's messaging her back. I hear you. Thanks for the warning. I heard he's already here. Don't worry. I'll handle it as best I can. Love you, big sis. And then sends it out. And then joins the team. You see, as soon as the message is sent, there's already a red notification. But there isn't a response. Hmm. Got it. I'm going to put my phone away, just look to the rest of the team, and look to Agent Ryu and just uh, look at the agent and say, you got anything else for us, or, or are we free to go? Um, I have to take you guys to go get checked out by the doctor. After mission, oh. standard protocol. We have to go? Oh my you have God. to. It's just so that if there are any long-standing injuries or anything happens from some, a fight that took place beforehand, there's documentation of it. He looks directly at you, Kinetic. It's so we can keep anything from happening to you guys. Laxi is just gonna like, try and like break the tension. Be like, come on y'all, it's fine. We do the, like, we're, We've done this after our training shit too. So like, it's it's a routine by this point, you know? We, we, we know the doc, he's, routine. He's, he's, he's not a dick, you know? Which that's cool. You guys Pretty know decent, that right? Agent Ryu, he's, he's normally, as far as everybody else in the Society of Sabres is considered, he doesn't talk, he's very straightforward, serious, stoic. But when he's speaking with all of you, there is a softness. There is a level of a want to see you succeed. A want to see you guys become whatever it is you want to become at the end of the day. Um, so he... I believe the children are future. <laughs> <laughs> so he, Sorry. 
he motions towards the med bay for you guys to go. Uh, Kinetic teleports behind him. You better be lucky that you're so attractive. I'll do this for you. For now. And then she basically teleports back like she's walking in the direction of the doctor's office. I was 12 when you were born. Oh, she's gone. Okay. <laughs> Uh, as you guys start making your way towards the uh, medical office, uh, as you enter, you meet Dr. Valerie Tiersen. Well, re-meet consistently after training scenarios have happened. Uh, Valerie Tiersen uh, is in her early 30s, uh, Nordic descent, long ember hair braided into warrior braids with subtle blue-gray eyes. Uh, she is also known by some of you as Air. Uh, she has large storm cloud hued wings with silver clouded armor with elder Futhrark runes adorning its entirety. She has been known to summon weapons made from lightning uh, and recently fought against Threshold's father uh, and was the last fight that was seen or heard about between Imperium and another hero. Uh, before Imperium kind of decided to lay low and disappear for a while. Uh, she is a trauma specialist as well as having a degree in clinical psychology as well. She volunteers at the Society of Sabres as the medical personnel and doctor as well as the psychological caregiver for all of the Sabres in the school. As you guys come in, she instantly turns and looks to all of you and says, who got hurt first? Galaxy is just gonna like... <laughs> raise a hand. Uh, you're sh I know, you're shocked. It, it, it's less shocking, more surprising. There's a difference in it. Uh, oh, she, really? gestures oh. for you to come over to where the examining table is and hits a few buttons on the side for the table to go from horizontal to vertical. And she said, just stand with your back against the, the plate. We'll get a full scan and we'll see if anything's been added to your physiology or if there's any damage to your physiology that I can repair because I'm still not a hundred percent certain I understand everything about you. Axie is just gonna chuckle and be like, "Don't worry about it, huh? Nobody does." And um, yeah, they're gonna go ahead and um, uh, I think they'll 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 be normal for a second and walk on the ground, but then as soon as they get to the table. They're immediately going to hover. Instantly, about five to six inches off the floor. Yeah. Just uh, so they're like perfectly positioned in the smack middle of this table. Perfect. Alrighty. So as you uh, set yourself to the middle of the examining table, you see a large ring move over the top of the table and then gently start sliding along the tracks. And you see like a blue silver hue uh, lights move over your body and then move back before resting itself back to the top. Uh, I imagine I that while this is happening, it's probably interacting with Galas Galaxia's physiology in a really different way than most Earthlings. Um, so in my brain, as this is scanning, uh, it's almost like uh, it, it's almost like she's evaporating. Like you see the little wisps of like of stardust, stardust come... clouds pulling away as it scans and then reforming as it passes by. Yeah, and as soon as it's over, Galaxia is just gonna like give like a really slight like little shake and be like. I can never get used to that. It always just feels a little too invasive. I want you to roll just 1d6 for me. Ooh, we're rolling. 
First We're rolling roll. a die. First roll. Oh shoot. <laughs> remember, uh, yeah, remember how we're playing a game with dice and I need to get those out? <laughs> <laughs> so, for those of you joining who have never played Masks a New Generation before, it's a 2D6 system. It uses the Powered by the Apocalypse uh, labels, stats, uh, playbooks, and two uh, uh, variable ad, uh, flowing stat system for everything. What did you get? Oh, you shall find out uh, oh, with nice. the trans dice tower. Nice. Oh, it's a six. We got a six. Hey. Awesome. Whee! Uh, oh, you can't read that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Tierson tells you that other than the anomaly that is Galaxia, there are no anomalies within <laughs> Galaxia. No additional anomalies. Yeah. Um, yep. She she asks you if there's anything you would like to speak about or have any further conversations about before she continues on with the rest of the team. Um, Galaxia is totally gonna give like like a, le a legit. She's really thinking about it. Um. No, I think it was just a really, really a difficult learning experience. There's a lot of those. I'm glad to see that you're safe, though. It's good to know that everyone here cares enough about each other to make sure you made it back. Yeah, Galaxia is going to um, let a, 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 a smile spread across her lips and be like, yeah. TBH, it was a little, you know, a little shaky there. I wasn't sure at first, but uh, but yeah, when push comes to shove, uh, and she looks at the rest of the group and she's like, we found out we, we got it. That's good to hear. All right, who's next? Moonen, I heard you had, you had gotten hurt. Slightly. Would you like to be checked? Sure. Why not? She motions for the same table again. Um, the table, the, the same like scanning tool comes over and moves. And as the light passes you and then moves back up, roll a d6 for me. Three. Uh, we are going to do this then. This is awesome. Great. Hey. Yay. <laughs> First death. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh, I'm on death. Say um, I'm on a three. Oh fuck. What's a one? <laughs> Excruciating death. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you pick which one. Uh, you're going to mark a condition as Dr. Tierson moves uh moves a portion of the armor plating that's right next to the right side of your ribs and you can see where there's that deep gouge from when you were attacked and she kind of looks at it looks at you you know there's only one group of people who uses weapons that cut like that yeah, you look like you might be familiar with them. I am. So, angry, afraid, guilty, hopeless, or insecure, which one do you want to mark? I think he's more angry about it. All right. Mark angry. Got it. So, with angry, you take a minus two to your rolls to comfort and support somebody or to pierce the mask. All right. Uh, she moves over to uh, the, uh, her table where she has a bunch of uh, like stacks of paper. There's uh, a photograph of her when she was uh, probably about 17 or 18. And there's another female in the picture with her as well. And they're both wearing uh, 
saber uniforms in the picture. Uh, she reaches over and she grabs a rune stone marked with health and she presses it against where the wound is on your side and you can feel that like elder magic old old magic start mm -hmm. to seal and close that wound away and as she pulls the stone away you see the rune glow for a moment and then almost like when you see dust push off almost cloud away when a, something is dropped on it that magic pushes off of the stone in a way and she hands the stone to you to hold on to said i may not have its magic anymore but at least i know it'll keep you healthy could have used you in iceland they could use me in a lot of places mm -hmm. but you guys need me more uh next who wants to volunteer Papa Luck is going to look at the rest of the team and just be like, look, any of you three, please go ahead of me, all right? Uh, take care of yourselves. I'll go at the end, but everybody just get checked so we can get over with and we can get out of here. We cool? Her dad, and then Kinetic's going to teleport, and then um, if, they, if she has a desk, she's going to sit on top of the desk mm -hmm. with her legs crossed. Can we carry on with this? No. Um, are you attempting to provoke her? No, actually, I'm I'm distracting her because I was going to ask if I can uh, use my criminal mind and see if there's anything of value over on her desk. On her desk? In that area. Go ahead, and that is a roll plus what? Um, let's see. I think it's just I, I, it's basically um. You roll to assess roll the superior. situation. Yeah, yeah. Assess the situation, and then I can ask, um, or yep. I can use that other question. And that is, let's see. Oh, that's six plus three. So that is six <laughs> plus three. So that is a nine. You get nine. to ask one. Uh, but you also get to ask one of the following questions from your criminal mind. So which one of the normal assess your situation, assess the situation questions do you want? What here can I use to blank? What here is the biggest threat? What here is the greatest danger? Who here is the most vulnerable to me? How could we best end this quickly? And then your criminal mind gives you what here is useful or valuable to me, which I assume is the one you're going for. Yeah, that's the that's definitely the the big one for me. Kind of seeing if there's anything that would be useful, uh, you know, in in battle uh, potentially or in these types of situations, uh, because she secretly uh, wants to look out for the team since she feels like they're not doing it. All right. Uh, so, um, yeah. There is that drawstring bag that's on the table that you saw her pull one of those stones out that she used to heal Moonin's wound and then gave to him at the end. There's a drawstring bag right there on the desk next to the picture of her with the other woman when they uh, when she was younger on the desk. Other than that, it's just okay. paperwork. Paperwork with other students' information and shit like okay. that. And then the other thing is, uh, what here in this room is the biggest threat to me? What here is the biggest threat to you? Um, currently, there isn't any threat to you at all. You've met with Dr. Tiersen after trainings. She's understanding. She's, even if you were to cuss her out right now, she's still the, it's okay, sweetheart. We, I know you're just upset about something. There isn't a, an aggressive bone in her body when it comes to the students. Anybody else, though, who mess with the students, she's full bore summoning swords and lances of lightning flying through the air and smiting every one of them. So as the adult hero here, she would be the biggest threat, quote unquote, okay. but she's not really a threat to you. Um, I'm going to, uh, Kinetic would basically try to, as she's like 
making a scene try to basically kind of use a little bit of that uh, quick fingeredness that she's kind of mastered over the years mm -hmm. to try to grab the, the drawstring bag but she wants to go through it okay uh you you grab it you grab that drawstring bag she's just she puts her hands out to you like we get scanned first there are things that i can't see with my eyes that this can see i want to make sure you're okay all right sure whatever and then basically she would have put her hand behind her back and then kind of put it into um like into a pocket of okay. her um of her leggings and then walked over to get scanned no problem roll a d6 for me as the scan is taking what did you get three make a condition afraid angry guilty hopeless or insecure Do you want me to tell you what the scanner found and then decide? Yeah, yeah, I okay. kind of want to find out. As the scanner moves down the first time, it almost pauses going past your face and then continues down the rest of your body moving back up. And again, there's that sudden pause as it scans and moves to lock itself away as Dr. Tierson looks to you and says, You know, when there are people around you, like the ones that are here right now, you don't have to worry about what's happened in your past. You get a sense that the scanner picked up your anger or your insecurity or your guilt or your fear of censor just being there last night at that mission. So which condition do you want to make? I will definitely mark angry for that. Alrighty. So you will have a minus two to comfort or support or pierce the mask until you clear that condition. Thanks for the pep talk, Doc. Are we Anytime. done here? We still have those three. Cool. And then she teleports away from the um, away from the scanner. Mm -hmm. And then she's over by uh, Moonin. Uh, the doctor looks over to Threshold and Apalaki. I know you wanted to go last, but whoever would like to go next. Doc, I know you know that I have regenerative powers, so yes, physically, I'm okay. This isn't, this doesn't just check for physical ailments. Just, all right. It's just but to be only, safe. Only because knowing that you fought my father and you're still this kind person, it, it gives me hope. So I, I approach for the scan. As you get over to the table, as she hits the the triggers and the buttons for it to start again she looks to you and says it gives me hope to see you trying to be a good person go ahead and roll that d6 for me five you're good no conditions so five and six were the saving grace Three and four gives you one condition. One and two gives you two conditions. Yeah, mass scanner. <laughs> As the scanner completes its run through of you threshold, the doctor looks and says, it's better to see good in you. I'm glad to see you're doing this. Thank you, Ed. It means a lot. Anytime you want to talk, we're up. I'm here, and Ryuk's here. At least we are. 
And she motions for Ryuk to come over now as he unbuttons his the the jacket that he's wearing from his suit, lays it over a chair, pulls two straps off of the side and pulls a bulletproof vest off and sets it to the side, undoes two holsters on his side, puts two guns down on the side, pulls a, a huge knife out from his boot. He's just removing random bits of weaponry and gadgets off of himself before stepping into the scanner. There's a lot on this table. That definitely more so than you guys thought he would be able to carry on him. And he looks much smaller without a bulletproof vest and this sports coat, business coat, suit coat on as well. He steps into the scanner. The doctor runs diagnosis she looks at him and goes I'm glad you see their worth stay with them and he goes I'm I'm planning on it unless they reassign me but even then I've got way too much time in for them to want to move me anywhere else He walks back over to the table after the scan completes and starts putting all of the different pieces onto his belt and in his pockets and puts his vest back on, re-secures it, puts his jacket over the top of it, puts a hand on Apalaki's shoulder and says, gee, get this done, I can get you to your father. (sighs) All right, all right. I I guess I don't have a choice. Uh, Nix, you cool with me going before you? Appreciate it. So Avalaki will walk over to the doctor and just say, I guess let's get me patched up then, because I guess heroes never die, right? Let's hope not. Uh, undo the uh, the bag. Your oh, equipment. My, my equipment bag, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah basically, Avalaki is just going to take the bow that he usually carries um, along with his, with his two, uh, twin swords. A uh, couple of smoke grenades as well for cover, as well as some grappling hooks. Uh, not as much gear as as Agent Ryuk has, and obviously while Agent Ryuk was putting down all this stuff, he's like, God, like how do I, how am I gonna be able to carry all that stuff? He, like he, how do I get to that level? But he, you know, take starts taking all his gear out of his pack and lays the pack on the uh, on the table as well. So just in his regular garb, and he steps up to the table as well uh, to get scanned or the. Uh, that's able to get scanned by the doctor. As the scanner makes its way, go ahead and roll that d6 for me. It's a four. Pick a condition. Or do you want me to tell you what's said first? Tell me what's said. Alrighty. As the scanner moves past, almost similar to what happened with uh, Kinetic, it pauses going past your face and then continues the rest of the scan and as it gets past your brow line again it pauses and moves further up and the doctor looks at you and says you know blood is a uh, a fickle thing it fights against itself and it protects itself but Sometimes it's just toxic. You got the truth. Well, you'll be pleased to know that none of the blood in my body is toxic. Uh, Unlike some other people you may have found out about, but but thanks, Doc. I appreciate it. Do I need to do anything else here? No, that should be it. Which condition are you going to take? Take insecure. Awesome. Alrighty, so you have a minus two to defend someone or reject in. Uh, anyone's influence over you. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dr. Tearson arms out to Nyx. Says, you're the last. I just, like, with a resigned face, just walk and put my back against it and just stand there. As it begins to move, scanning you, go ahead and roll a d6 for me. Six. Six, you are safe, no conditions, nothing more. Um, but something strange does happen. 
as it finishes its scan of you. You can see the doctor's mouth moving, but you don't hear anything that she's saying. As just before the scan finished, you hear your father's voice. Solaris, I heard what happened. You did great. I mean, just a little bit more. You, you got to give yourself more. Give yourself more credit. Give yourself more push. You're right there. You can do this. It's beautiful to see. And then you hear your mother's voice. Leave her alone. She'll use her powers how she decides and when she decides. She says, I'm proud of you. You kept them safe even after what happened. We're watching, but I won't let him get involved when he should. And then the sound of the world comes back in. And the last words you hear from the doctor is passion. For the rest of you, you would have heard the doctor tell Nix, it's often in moments where we don't believe in ourselves when we can save others with our passion. And as she says that, when I hear passion, I kind of just like give a side eye to Galaxia and then look away real fast before she can see me or before they can see me. Alrighty. Now with all of these scans completed and taken care of, Agent Ryuk looks to the rest of you and says, well, I have uh, something to do with Apalaki but meet me in my office and we can go over our next mission. You should have no problem getting in as he points at Kinetic. Just unlock it from the inside. Don't mind if I do. And he'll move with Apalaki, put a hand on your shoulder and so and tell you this can end as fast as you want it to. Wait, let's, let's get it over with. I don't need to be sweating this anymore. Lead the way. Right. Galaxy me. is going to comment. She's all like, damn, it's just like back to back to back here, ain't it? <laughs> Trust me, you'll never get used to it. It's so, oh. so irritating. Yeah, I'm like, I can't can't even take a nap first. All right, whatever. <laughs> There's a cot in my office you can take a nap on. No, no, it's okay. We apparently have something to go do now, so. It won't be until later tonight, but I at least give you the details of it. And uh, him and Apalaki leave the room. Um, I follow. Can you're following um, Thresh? And Kinetic yeah, whispers Thresh, to Galaxia. Follow. If if you're bored, just join me and Moon and we'll find some fun stuff to do. Galaxia is gonna like have like a slight smile, but she's or they're one hundred percent going to like look at Nyx for approval. <laughs> Nyx just <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, right. and Galaxia, um, as Apalaki's uh, walking out, though, Galaxia is going to, um, I imagine that the way she uses her pheromone powers is her, her, she, um, releases stardust. Imagination? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> or it's just like, or like, like, a, <laughs> and then it's just like a little galaxy floats towards you. So, um, yeah, um, uh, while Apalaki is on the way out the door, um, mm -hmm. I am uh, going to um, uh, 
blow them a nice little kiss and just be like, hey, bud, you know, I, I, I haven't been here super duper long, but I will say that uh, of the friends I've met on Earth, you got a good head on your shoulders. And uh, are you trying to think, comfort and support Apalaki? I think I am, specifically <laughs> by telling him how he exemplifies the best parts of Earth. <laughs> I love this. So go ahead and roll plus freak instead of mundane. <laughs> That's. <laughs> um, and and this is the two d six, right? Yes, two d six plus freak. Beautiful. 2d6 plus freak. And do I have influence over... No, you have influence over me. Yes. Oh, uh, that's not a very good roll. That's um five, six, seven. That's a seven. That's not that bad. It's not that good. They can mark potential, clear a condition, or shift labels if they open up to you. So, Apalaki, it is up to you to decide if you're going to open up to them. I, if I open up, does that mean it gets a clear condition or? Yes. Then I will open up, uh, if that allows me to clear insecure. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna motion to Agent real, real quick and just stop. Hey, Agent, one moment, please. And I'm gonna look back to Galaxia, catch the kiss, actually, and <laughs> at least tap my heart with it and say, I, I appreciate that. Um, I'm doing my best and for what it's worth, I hope we can. I hope everybody here treats you the same way that you know you hope to be treated. I gotta go do this though. Um, handle everybody while I get back. All right. Oh, we'll be here, honey. Don't worry about it. Appreciate it. Thanks, and Thresh. Are you hiding that you're going with them to go and see Apalaki's father, or are you? Just yeah, right I'm, alongside. I'm, I'm, him? Nah, I'm, I'm like chilling behind. I don't want them to know. Okay. Um, give me there is a rule I want you to make for this. Let me get to yours. Give me what, what powers did you take again? You took the electrokinesis, the regeneration, and yep. that's the only two that you have. Yep. I'm also very handsome, but that's not a power. It's just, it's just like, no. <laughs> in case anyone's um, wondering. I'm, that's just. You. I'm so sorry, but like Galaxia's power is oh, literally for sure. being. Oh yeah, like, yeah. Like, it by says far. on um, the character sheet, stunning right. beauty under ability. So I'm, I'm sorry. I have the monopoly on that one. Okay, if you want that, you guys want the fight. outsider. All right, so Thresh, I want you to make me a roll using either danger or superior. You can pick either one you want to use, but this is going to determine uh, how well you are trailing behind an Aegis agent <laughs> who specializes in reading people's body language and Apalaki, who is raised by the greatest detectives mm -hmm. of the superhero world. I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. give me a roll plus danger or a roll plus superior. Either you're doing this the... knowing that it's a bad idea or you're doing this yeah. because you think you're the best at it. Yeah, no, the 2d6 plus danger. Alrighty. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, that's 10. Ooh. Abalaki, when you turn, when you stopped with Agent Ryu in order to have that, that short conversation with Galaxia, Thresh was gone. And he probably went back to the office already. Yeah. Probably already made his way there. Look, I like Thresh, and he's not going to do anything. I know where he comes from and I know what he's trying to do so I have full faith that he's he's taking care of himself all right so as you and agent Ryu make your way past the medical office passing the Dean's office into the 
central foyer of the Society of Sabres, you see your father standing in the center of the foyer, not in uniform. He's retired. Unwantingly. And he knows that he's not allowed to wear his uniform here Mm -hmm. if he isn't an active hero. And he's just staring at the hallway that you and Agent Ryuk are walking down. I'm going to look at Agent Ryuk and just say, I'm pretty sure I have to go through this one without you. Am I right? No. Technically, you are a ward of the Society of Sabres, and I am your acting conservator and guardian. He gave me the right to stand with you. I... I, 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 Agent, thank you. Um, I guess let's let's do this. You know, let's get it over with, and we're gonna let's walk over to my dad. Uh, Thresh, you see, just as they're making their way past the hallway, uh, you hear not loud, but a stern voice. You should be better at hiding than that. Apalaki, you know your father's speaking to somebody you're not seeing right now. Dad, Dad, what are are you talking about? Hold on. Agent Ryuk even turns around and is like, who is he referring to? Dad, there's nobody here. It's just us. What do you want? Step out. So I like, I'm statically charged to the wall. I'm imagining it's like a metal corridor. Yeah. But I'm like up top. So I just, I just bring myself down. So I, I didn't mean, no, I did. I meant to intrude. <laughs> uh, you caught me. Um, I've just, I don't know what a relationship between a son and father is like. So I just thought if I could get a sample, maybe maybe just observe. Agent, you see Agent Ryuk with his back towards uh, Bathala. He's like... Uh, Apalaki, is, uh, I'm going to go over to Thresh and just say, hey, look, I, I, I got you, man. Uh, now's not really a good time. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll get you back at the... I'll, I'll get you... Once we're, once we're ready for the next mission, trust me. Now's not a good time, man. No, just go. Just go. Well, just before I go, just know you don't have to be your father. Okay? He didn't give himself much of a choice. You hear Bethala say. I'll see you in a bit, Fresh. Don't worry about me, all right? And I'm gonna just pat Thresh's shoulder and turn to go back to my dad and Agent Rook. I walk away. I am no match for Badala. Your father looks at you, Apalaki. Two buildings, an alleyway, a city street. And you were being tailed and had no idea. Okay, so two buildings, an alleyway, and I'm being tailed. Okay, guess what? I'm not the great Bethala. I'm not the god that you are supposed to be. You know, I get it. I'm not Mayari either. I know you still blame me for that, even though it's not the truth. But you know what? No, I'm doing my best here. You put me here. I don't even know. I, I, do I even belong here? I don't know. What, what, what is this punishment that you got for me here? Like, why, why, why did you even show up today? I showed up to let you know that Eleanor is home now. I didn't show up with the intention of hearing about what you had done the night before. <sighs> dad, dad. But this is a punishment. 
this is a bad thing. Me wanting you to absolve yourself for humiliating your sister and removing her from having any opportunity that she wanted. Removing me from being able to continue to protect the people of this wonderful city so that you could learn, so that you could become better, so that you didn't become me, but you're already acting as rash as I did. So, I guess you need to stay. I took those actions because I needed to make sure my teammates were okay. My teammates come before everybody else right now, and I've got to make sure every single one of them gets back. I made the same thing. I'll, I'll make mistakes. It happens. But as long as all those bodies are back in there, that's all that I care about right now. For you, all right? puts a hand on your shoulder. And he looks to Bathala and goes, he's welcomed here. He has a whole team of people willing to make sure that he makes the right decisions. I will back him even if he makes the wrong ones. You, sir, are a civilian on Aegis property, on the top secret bit of land that is controlled by Aegis, the Society of Sabres, Vosta et the Hermit. I don't know if you recall who that is. Uh, golden age hero immortal psychometry you know the ability of precognition and the greatest combatant in the world is a better detective than you are i suggest you leave he keeps his hand on your shoulder you can feel it's trembling but you don't feel any fear coming from agent Duke. bathala looks at you goes Yes, you do need to stay. That's right. That's right, Dad. I'm gonna stay. Because, unlike some people, I'll actually complete what I started. And I'll finish the job. And I'll make sure I make sure that everybody's safe doing it. This is my team. And we move from that scene to the rest of you leaving the medical bay. Are you guys going directly to Agent Ryuk's office or are there shenanigans afoot? <laughs> Galaxia is 100% like, can we please stop by my dorm? <laughs> can we please? I just need like two Do minutes. you have booze in there? Please tell me you have booze. Please tell me you have booze. I have something to add. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if Nyx wasn't such a stick in the freaking butt, maybe we could have more fun with you. Hey, hey, uh. hey, no, no, there's just, uh, I don't know. Uh, stick in the, stick in the butt. Why are we kink shaming here? <laughs> no one's kink shaming if that's what you're into. Hey. Kink shaming is kink shaming. Well, you know what? Um, I I think sticks and butts are cool. Galaxia does not entirely understand what stick in the butt means, I think. <laughs> she so walks robberies. Up. Sticks and butts. What? I leave for five seconds and you guys are talking about the worst well, type of I topic. Mean, listen, <laughs> all I know is that Galaxia said she has some good stuff in her dorm and I just need booze or something because this is to get through the rest of this especially because we can't even we have to wait for them to have their like whole conversation over there we've already been dragged to the medical bay we've had to talk to that bastard and explain ourselves I'm well, not you. if anyone's gonna need uh, a little release it's, it's gonna be Apolaki he has uh, <laughs> ah he his dad's not great. You know, the, the gay in power. Oh, we should make jackets. Not great. Yeah. <laughs> Does your dad suck? Yes. Let's just all join Absolutely. a team. Oh, man. Well, I, I guess we you. are on a team, so I guess it works out perfectly. Then. I bet you. Okay, but really, like, I need that jacket. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Um, so what, the dorm. what are you I doing? Don't, I don't want to participate in a robbery, but we can go to the dorm. Then I won't be such a stick in the butt. And my <laughs> eyes kind of cloud over black when I say that. And then you see Kinetic instantly just kind of like look a little bit uh, afraid because she is a little bit intimidated, but she tries to that kind of show it. So she goes over to the moon and, oh man, dude, uh, like you kind of got your ass kicked. Yeah. Um, yeah, that fucking sucked. How you doing? Uh, Sorry, man. It didn't register. It's all right. We should uh, go to Ryuk's office. I bet you he has a stash. A good one. Well, is it better than Galaxia's stash? It sounds like she has some, like, stuff that's... You're probably awesome. right. We should probably hit that first. Yeah. So you guys are going to Galaxia's dorm? Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Um, All right, so yeah, the group of you make your way down the, through the hallways of the Society of Sabres into where the dormitory areas are. In front of room 409 is Galaxia's room. Galaxia, describe your room for everyone. Okay, so Galaxia's <laughs> room is like cute as fuck. Like, it is vibes. Like, Galaxia 1000% has an aesthetic. Her room is 100% on TikTok. Um, <laughs> she floats in and the lighting changes to her mood. LOL, Coral bought Phillips Hue lightings and she's excited about it. Um, so the lighting immediately switches to like this really cute like blue shit and um that's not blue we'll change it later and um <laughs> and she just like floats in um like she's almost touching the ceiling um grabs like a cute little jar off of the shelf like on her way to the bed which is like filled with too many pillows um and they're all fluffy and Colorful. Is Galaxia yeah. a Squishmallow fan? I don't know what that is. Those I'm not enough. Of, am I not enough of an e-girl to know what this is? <laughs> yes, e-girl points down now. It's okay. Well, I, know, I, I know animal. the makeup makes me look like an e-girl right now, but I'm really not. <laughs> well, the from that description, it's just like oh. pillows. Yeah, I'm not an e-girl. Galaxia definitely is. <laughs> there we go. Kinetic's gonna teleport um, and like literally jump onto the, the, wherever it seems like there's a bunch, like just a big pile of pillows that she can just like fall back onto and like kick her legs up and like, like a little So bit. like you're teleporting like right above the bed. So uh, right above so I can it. fall and then be like kicking my legs like a little kid. Yes, love it. Galaxia does that all the time, <laughs> only she flies. Thresh, what are you doing as you walk into the bluely lit hued room? And oh yeah, I am lighting it blue now. Flying and teleporting people to sit on a bed covered in soft, squishy animal pillows. And if the, if the lights weren't correct, it's only because Thresh had messed with the electrons to just keep changing colors at his whim because he doesn't want Galaxy to have like full reign uh, and control <laughs> of their of their room. <laughs> Roll to so, unleash yeah, your power. Just all of this is going on in the background. And we're she's have... just like, dude, dude. <laughs> Roll to unleash dude, your power. I'm trying to get vibes oh, no. here. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to end well. Is that, is that plus anything or is it just a straight up 2d6? It is 2d6 plus freak. You got it. Ooh. Oh, shit. What are we rolling? Fuck. I was too busy playing with my lights. And... <laughs> Thresh is interacting with the electrons in the lights themselves to keep them moving through the color spectrum. Because ten. 10, you do it. On a hit, you, you accomplish exactly what you wanted to do. So the light, you're just keeping the mood lighting going every different direction you want. Okay, okay, we can do this too. We can do this too. Oh no, are we all, is everybody unleashing their powers? Wait, is there a disco ball in this room? <laughs> I 
No, I'm assuming there's is a there? no disco ball. <laughs> Darn it. No disco ball. But the colors are vibrant currently. And Nyx, how about you? Is this um, your... I'll probably go. Better question. Is this your okay. first time in Galaxia's room? I don't know. Galaxia, is it my first time in your room? Um, absolutely not. <laughs> and okay. here's, um, and, and there we go. There's Thresh's electrons doing the thing. <laughs> there we go. I was going to say, I would probably take, like, my customary spot, like, on the windowsill after moving, like, random, like, scarves and pillows and probably a bunch of plants and just, like, all kinds of just random Dead things. Plants. Yeah. And I kind of just like make a little spot for me to perch on. Love the perch. Alrighty. And as you guys are now in the room, Galaxia, what is the secret stash everyone is now hearing about? Oh, I mean, uh, TBH, it's probably not that secret. It's probably an open secret. Um, <laughs> that Galaxia fucking crash landed on Earth and found um, some really awesome plants. <laughs> um, and uh, so, yeah, um, I imagine that um, Galaxia grows her own weed and it is out of this world um, because I imagine Galaxia as like a cross between Starfire and um, Poison Ivy. Yes. Um, so I know she doesn't have plant magic, but I'm just gonna say her galaxy magic has an effect on plants. The pheromones definitely have an effect on plants. If you tell a plant you love it enough, it grows much better than screaming obscenities at it. Oh, shit. That's what I'm doing <laughs> wrong. Okay. <laughs> now it makes um, sense. Um, but yeah, yeah. So, um, she goes over to like the windowsill with the plants and, um, I think she like starts like harvesting a, a, some shit like directly from the bud and like goes and like, um, starts to, um, like sets that aside to cure it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, um, like grabs her, her, her batch that she's been working on. Because, you know, it's just an ongoing project. It's all a circle. It's the circle of life. Anyway. So at this point, as you are readying your stash, uh, those of you who are there at Galaxia's room, your phones all receive a message. Galaxia is just going to be like, the fucking timing. It's the fun police. Probably. Of uh. <laughs> uh, you see Agent Ryuk's message. Uh, if nobody else is looking and it's just kinetic. Um, but if everybody's yeah, looking. Somebody else is looking, then Galaxia is going to just let them get it. She's focused. They're focused. <laughs> yeah, do your thing. Do your thing. I'll, I'll look. Um. <laughs> Ryuk's, uh, Agent Ryuk's message states, Apalaki's meeting is done. We'll be making my way to the office shortly. A new member is being added to the team. Oh, hell no. Dot, dot, dot. Hell? Don't we have enough people on this team? Nah, bro. Galaxy is gonna be like, okay, it's not the new member, it's the dot 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 that's worrying me, okay? Um, Galaxy, you got a cat in your room? No? Oh, okay, I thought. Galaxy, what the hell is that loud? Cats are not allowed. Like, uh, at least that rule I'll follow. Maybe it's oh, like a space cat. Oh. Is that like a thing? <laughs> it yeah, sounds like, um, like space God. cat. It sounds like a damn space cat. Neon yeah, cat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, right now my cat's hanging out on the ship, so like, <laughs> well, wait, I go and like, I check under the bed and like in the closet and I'm like, Galaga. Roll assess the situation for me. 
What uh, what am I rolling with that? Assess the situation should be plus and whatever. Assess the plus situation. superior. Plus superior. Oh, okay, bitch. That's uh twelve. Twelve. <laughs> um, did you take uh Kirby Craft as one of your moves? I did. The cat is on the ship. Okay, yeah. yeah. Not anywhere um, in the room. Yeah, so she, or they look like, they look under the bed, in the closet, and then you just see them, like, stand in the middle of the room for a second, and, like, like, their eyes don't, like, go to the back of their head, but it's like they're talking to somebody. And they're like... Yeah, yeah, cats on the ship. Just checked. Cats on the ship. We're good. So this is I have telepathy have to with now. my Kirby craft. Oh, we didn't even try this stuff yet. Oh, God. Um, I don't know about you. I don't plan on leaving before at least getting one in. So... Okay, okay. Who all is partaking? Kinetics, definitely. Not. Kinetics, definitely. Yeah. Thresh, Thresh is not. Two, four, two, no. Moon in. I, I think uh, he's going to act like super cool about it and be like, yeah, for sure. And then like side hit it, like <coughs> try and play it off. So two and a half are <laughs> and two yeah, are two not. Um, Galaxia, canonically, your character does this, so you will not be rolling a d6 for me currently. Oh, no! <laughs> Kinetic, on the other hand. Canonically, my character's a stoner. <laughs> yes, so just one, that is or canon. Is it just one d6 currently. And what did you get? You got a good body high going. Oh, yeah. Nothing. You Ooh. feels great. Oh, yes. <laughs> Moon in. Great. Mm. Galaxia's just going to be like, yeah, that's Roll exactly a D6 how it me. feels when oh, the wings God come out. And it, oh. All of a sudden, you see pillows basically just kind of floating in the air. What'd you get, just... Moon in? A one. Oh, no. It's shit. a total lightweight. <laughs> High shit. Instant. You meant to side hit this. Yeah. You meant to not take this in. You yeah. meant to just play the role <laughs> and have a good time. Yeah. You are immediately afraid of how high you are right now. Yeah. This hit you like a freight truck. <laughs> and you were just fighting an assassin the night before, and this hit harder yeah. than the assassin <laughs> who stabbed you last night. I think I need a shower. <laughs> I'm hungry as hell. Did you hear that? What? What the fuck? Dude, is just gonna be like, chill, oh, chill, chill. Oh my god. Oh, dang it. Girl, if I'm you were gonna be like this, way. I wouldn't have given it to you in the first place. Okay, 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 okay. Let's, is, let's go. Let's go. Like Let, this. Let's just go and hurry up and then mune it. Don't say anything when we're in there. Just shut up. Don't say anything. Let us nothing. just do the talking. Absolutely yeah. nothing. And don't do direct eye contact. You know he does that thing where he just figures like out. Like this right now? Don't head. do this? Yeah, don't do not do over that. there? No, 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 no. Like, don't be weird about it. Just, just be it's chill. Screwed. Which okay. Galaxia, Galaxia is okay. also going to go up and just like take his face in it in, in in their hands and be like, "Look, all right, you exemplify human strength. You just got, you just I've been got telling him that. I've been telling him you, that. You just, you just took an axe to the side." And look at you, you're still standing. How I mean, I really many did. how many earthlings can fucking say that, huh? Comforter, I mean maybe a couple, support, but not many. <laughs> plus freak instead yeah. of mundane. Oh, that is a six. A six. Uh no. He 
he's just too high. No, he <laughs> is too high. You do get to yeah. mark potential, though. Yeah. You guys, I'm good. I'm good. I'm and at that, really at good. That moment right there, we jump back over to Agent Ryuk and Apalaki. As you guys are making your way down the hallway, passing the dean's office, he tells you, um, we're gonna be adding somebody to the team. He's not going on any missions, more or less shadowing the group outside of missions. Is it the tech guy? <laughs> this is with Apalaki. Oh. You're in the room <laughs> with Galaxia and Kinetic. I heard something, I swear. Hi. <laughs> is it, you are adding somebody, is it like, do we need, is it somebody who can handle something like tech? I don't know. I mean, maybe we need some more of that. I, I could definitely use some help. What's, who's this new member? Um, he, we, when I say we, I mean Aegis, but not me as a part of Aegis. Um, they saved this kid from a couple of villains and he's quiet he's shut down it's like they they ripped the humanity out of him with whatever they did and I I volunteered you guys for it but he's not going on any missions He's not leaving the school grounds. He's, it's just so he has an opportunity to be around people who care about each other and not people who use each other. Uh, Agent, no disrespect. Are, are you absolutely certain that we're the best people for this kid to be around? I, and this, we're not going to be around. A lot of you guys are sending us out on missions all, like, all the time. It sounds like we're, we're backlogged here. Are you sure this is the right idea? The mission I'm, I'm offering you guys tonight is one that I shouldn't be offering you guys tonight. You don't have to take it, but I think you guys might want to. And when you guys are out, he'll be staying with me. I'll be keeping an eye on him. I'll be doing a full psychological immersion on him the right way. All right, whatever you say, but as, as far as this mission goes, no acceptance until the team gets here. Well, you'll have a chance to get Sensor, Imperium, and Suter all in one place. Won't be able to actually do anything to them. It's just information gathering, but they're all going to be in the same spot. You're kidding. How, how'd you find out about this? I have been an Aegis agent since I was 16 years old. Right, 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 right. So I, I'm sorry. I, I, it's okay. It's yeah, okay. I'm just a little. There's a lot. Uh, let's just get the team back. I, they need to hear this too. And at that, we are going to get ready to take our break. And just before our break, we do have a giveaway with Mithril. Uh, so tonight's keyword, enter it one time in chat, is FORGE, F-O-R-G-E. Enter it one time in chat to be entered in for the giveaway. Uh, once we come back from the break, we'll be able to give you the information on who won for the night and how to collect your prize. Let's go around for everybody. Uh, first question for everybody, and only question currently everybody is do you feel closer to the team further from the team or not trust anyone on the team we'll start with andy uh i actually feel a little further from the team now because i keep getting pulled away because of my dad so i can't feel like i'm not able to bond with anybody except the only person i do feel close to is galaxia because galaxia gave me a vote of confidence and i, I should say thresh as well because you know, Thresh was willing to, you know, interact. So I think those are really the only two, but everybody else I feel very far from. Alrighty, next, uh, Lauren. I'd say she's probably still feeling far, except for from Galaxia. Um, just because there's still kind of tension between everybody else. 
as well as the training accident that happened, so everyone's still scared of her. Alrighty. Uh, Coral. Galaxia loves all of these bitches. <laughs> Galaxia's like, y'all, you just saved my fucking life. I, let me smoke you out, please. <laughs> all right. Uh, Royal. Dresh is still uh, a bit reserved. Dresh isn't really opening up and like exposing the stuff that, that he wants to do. Um, but at the same time, when observing everyone, it's like, all right, I'm, he's picking and choosing in which groups are the fun groups and which groups are the, like, the more serious conversation uh, type people. So definitely on leaning towards being closer to everyone and not as isolated um, that he came in with. Awesome. Jimmy. I think Moonen is extremely close to the group now. <laughs> After that, he's high as shit, having the greatest <laughs> conversation ever with himself. <laughs> yeah, super Wonderful. close to the group. And you see me. Uh, definitely uh, after that uh, wonderful shared experience, um, I think that in her own way, it's her way of kind of bonding with the group is just getting into stuff, even though that's probably not the best way to bond but for her that's like that's her way of basically showing that she cares by like hey let's get let's do some things and let's do things stuff. we shouldn't do yeah. together <laughs> together yeah as a unit a team awesome all righty <laughs> everybody why do you hate your dad hashtag, hashtag why do you hate your dad all righty you guys well, we will girl, see how much longer do we have <laughs> We'll see you guys after the break. Don't forget to enter in Forge, F-O-R-G-E, and to chat for the giveaway. Thank you guys so much for being here, and we will see you shortly.
Welcome back, everybody, to Masks, a new generation, one shot society of sabers. We're joined with all of our wonderful heroes, question mark. Um, and now we are going to find out who won our giveaway. So let's go ahead and see who our winner is going to be for the Mythical Tin Dice. Tension is rising. <laughs> and our winner is Big Daddy Starbuck. Woo! Congratulations on winning tonight. Information will be given inside a chat for you to be able to collect your prize. Uh, go ahead and check it out. And congratulations. Now, let's get back into Society of Sabres. With everyone in Galaxia's room, you've received the text message. You have thoroughly gotten Moon and High <laughs> <laughs> and have been alerted to go and meet in Agent Ryuk's office. What do you do? Before, um, they basically move to try to go to his office. Kinetic's going to reach into her back pocket where she lifted the um, the bag off of the table in the medical mm -hmm. bay uh, just to see the contents and what's in it. Alrighty. As you pull the bag out, undo the drawstrings and look inside, you can see there are roughly about two or three dozen of these small smooth river rocks with carved elder food elder food for our grooms on them um some of them seem to be giving off a uh, light green coloration to them some of them light red some of them yellow gold some of them uh bluish in in, in color um, they're all different but it seems looking over them all of the ones that have a green coloration all have the same room. All the ones that are red have the same room. All of the ones that are yellow have the same room. Would she know um, anything about what each of them would be able to do? Or that's um, something? Well, you know what the green ones do, because you saw that one being used on Unin for the stab wound that was on his side. Um, you don't know what the other ones do. Um, let's go with, roll to assess the situation. Okay. Let's see here. So that is going to be seven. Seven, awesome. Uh, so to your question is what do the other ones do? Yeah. Yeah. Um, looking over the ones that are in inside there, the yellow ones seem to have some kind of lightning or energy release to them, almost like a small spark. Uh, you can ascertain that those are probably used as like natural defibrillators. Um, the green ones are the ones that healed the deep wounds on Moonin. The blue ones give off a calming essence to them, almost like it will completely relax somebody um, thoroughly. And the red ones are giving off heat, immense heat. And it's in like small flashes as you see the, the energy move through the rune and then it's not hot anymore. And then when it moves through again, it gets hot and then stops being hot. So these seem to be some kind of magic, like rune stones themselves. I found something very interesting. Definitely saving these for later. And then she's basically gonna close the bag back mm -hmm. up after like she messed around with a few of them in her hand. And she didn't necessarily hide it from the rest of the group because she just yeah. basically was just pulling out these messing stones with and them, messing with them, looking at them. 
and then uh, she put them back into her pocket. All right. Um, are you all heading towards Agent Ryuk's office now? Yeah. Reluctant. I think so. But yes. Can I? Um, can I? Can I stop by the vending machine? Yeah. Awesome. You stop. You stop by the vending machine, and you're looking at it, and it's it has like every variant of the hostess Twinkies inside of it. It's mm-hmm. got all of the cupcakes in there. It has like six different drinks along the bottom in a cooled area as you're just staring at it. The rest of you see Moonin looking at a door. <laughs> Fuck. Just a door. I'm trying to tap with my phone on the door handle like it's the pay here thing. Uh, Galaxy is just going to shake her head and be like, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, we're there. What you doing, buddy? I'm Woo. trying to... You, like, you're not hungry? You don't see this right here? Starving. Oh. Kinetic, Moonin. you know... Kinetic, you know that from the time Moonin spent with his uncle, um, <clears throat> the chemicals in his body, like the acids in his muscles, the, the dopamine, serotonin, and... Uh, other chemicals in his brain and the trigger releases for them were all altered by his uncle. So he's not just regular high. He is seeing shit that's not there. Oh, so what we're gonna do is Mm -hmm. after we have this boring meeting, we're gonna get you lots and lots of food, okay? Awesome, that's awesome. Yeah, let's just say um, you I'm fucked hungry. up. Who fucked you really, up? You, you're, you are. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. You're right. I am. That happened yesterday, and now you just got kind of fucked up in another we, way. We it's got fine. high yesterday. It happens. Uh, um, no. Oh fuck. Um, well, it's okay. Just remember what I said. Don't, shh, don't talk. Okay. Just stay quiet. And I'll get you all the hostess cakes, okay? Yeah. Okay. You have Maxia's. the blue stones. Actually, oh, I have something for you, friend. And then she's gonna reach back into her pocket and then pull out one of the blue stones. Can I read I it? What it says exactly? As you look over it, it says Nord, N J O R D. Uh, Nord. Right. You know, you know that to be the god of the seas, calming, you know, storms, things of that nature. Uh, mm-hmm. It's glowing blue. That's pretty blue. Like that's the best blue you have ever seen in your <laughs> life. Wow. Can, yeah. 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 You want to hold it? You want to hold it? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. There you go. As you it. hand it to him. Um, Kinetic, I want you to roll a comfort or support and Oh no, I have a minus two <laughs> Pick which label you want to add to it because oh. you are using a a magic rune to comfort and support an ally mm. and it is, the runes on there are directly derivative of his religious beliefs as well so you can pick mundane, you can pick savior, you can pick any of the any of the oh, following. Can I do superior? In this Absolutely. Situation? Awesome. Fantastic. Oh, that's a thirteen. Like minus two, so then. Yeah, 11. so an eleven. So almost like a wave of of, of clear cold water runs over your entire body moon and and those of you that are there see that blue light pulse off of that stone and it like envelop his whole body and then dissipate away moon and you're stone cold sober and you have no idea where the vending machine went yeah is this ryuk's office are we here already no you're standing at, at another dorm room across from galaxia's dorm room yeah, I was asking in character. 
No, 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 <laughs> Moonin. We, no, we are not. Buddy. We're not there yet. And then Kinetic's just gonna pat him on the back. Yeah, don't let me do that again. That was a bad idea. Yeah, I thought that you were gonna. I mean, it's great. I gesture over to Galaxia. It's great, but not for me. <laughs> we gotta work work up your tolerance. We're gonna we'll work on it. We'll work on it. But let's go take care of this and be done with it already. Let's go. You're muted. Galaxia. I'm so muted. <laughs> How long have I been muted, damn it? Uh, <laughs> probably quite some time. That. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Love it. Beautiful. Um, as we walk and talk, Galaxia's 100% gonna lean over and just be like, brawl. I need one of those just to keep in the back pocket for future, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> oh, oh, sure. How many of those blue blue stones were in there too? There, no, there was roughly a dozen of a dozen? each one of those stones. Oh, perfect. So there's so, yeah. eleven of the blue ones left now. Okay, yeah. So kinetic's definitely going to be like, here, just just hang on to that, and then later, you know, at least now you now we know how it works. I mean, that could have actually went really bad, but I mean. It was worth no. it, you know, to try it well, out. Well, if you if you're giving out stones, what do you? Is there something I can hold on to? Maybe maybe to my benefit that I could uh, use anything I at mean, all. You know, you do like to get like up in in there, you know, and fight people. So yeah, you don't want to end up like Munin, who obviously had that big gash on the side. So maybe I'll give you this one. So she's gonna pass threshold um the green one for the healing okay Alrighty. so i can't i can't use this um i have yeah. the powers i'm sure you've known that i give this uh, one back give me it, a yeah, different one it's redundant oh maybe something yeah. more particular hey, to listen me. listen i mean i i did partake of Galaxia's stash, so I'm sorry. I totally forgot. Whoa! <laughs> um, anyway, okay, let's see. Um, and then, uh, you know what? Hey, what about this one? And then she's gonna pass the one that is, like, emulating the fire. That kind mm -hmm. of... The red one? What about this? Is I mean, this... I don't know. What? Maybe throw it in someone's face. Moonin, and then... Moonin, what is... Moonin, can you read this? What does this one say? Oh, yeah. That oh, one shit. reads pyre. This one says pyre. Like a yeah. funeral pyre. Mm. Mm. Yeah, so like you can so just like totally is... burn someone to a cinder. It's burn great. someone. Um, yeah. Great. This is not the element that I can control with my hands. Can, can you give me? Oh, you're so give picky, God. God. Just I'm like, take a honey, stone. at a certain point, it's just kind oh of like God. a beggar's <laughs> camp. Listen, you, you said you did water. <laughs> you did. You did Listen, water. Thresh, you thresh, did fire. Thresh, thresh. What you? What, what? What do you want? Do you want lightning? Do you want the thunder and the lightning? Do you Do want... you have? Is that what you're you're implying that you have? That would be helpful. I might. I mean, <laughs> this thing was kind of doing the, the this thing, and then she passes yeah. the other uh, one that basically had the the, the yellow light of mm -hmm. like the thunder. Yes, I'll. I like this one. I'll hold on to this one. Ding ding ding! We have a winner now. Can we go? Father arguing over this can i just conjure a thunderstorm above them in the hallway <laughs> roll to unleash your powers all right is that roll 2d6s 2d6 plus freak okay 12. Ooh, jeez there is i want you to describe the thunderstorm that nix is conjuring over everyone Okay, so no rain, because I don't want anyone getting wet. But because I'm tired of them just going back and forth, it's just black clouds, just a mass above them, and just start swirling, and the thunder just shakes the building, and lightning streaks through the clouds and stuff like that. And I'm just Sick. sitting there looking bored, just like doing this above them. Sick. Kinetic immediately teleports into the office. <laughs> You are in the office, Kinetic, and Thresh, in that stone, this feels like a high-capacity battery, and it's already holding its capacity worth of elect uh, electrical force inside of it. 
as this storm cloud immediately appears over you as you're looking into this stone and you hear this barrage of thunder around you and then see the lightning dancing through the clouds and then kinetic disappears can i i want to raise my hands this, these are actual thunders and lightning like i can see the lightning right yeah this is 100 percent conjured a real like uh controlled and contained thunderstorm right over the top of you guys I want to. I want to take the lightning out. Okay. And and what are you going to do with it? Just sizzle it. You oh, know. just just pull it and hold it for a second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You raise a hand up, and a single bolt arcs into your hand as you just hold that energy as it pulses and moves in your palm. Hmm. I think Nix is upset. You guys. <laughs> We should probably head in there before we something dangerous probably. happens with lightning. Ooh. I make it rain on him. <laughs> <laughs> and at that point, we move to Agent Ryuk and Apalaki. Uh, Apalaki, you and Agent Ryuk move into a side office a few doors down from the medical bay. Uh, you see him pull his Society of Sabres badge out, place it against the door as the door then pushes inward and slides into its compartment. Inside, you see Dr. Tierson doing a, 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 an examination of a young boy. He is, he looks to be about 14 years old, black hair, feathered and full. As he's turning his head and Dr. Tierson is looking into his ears, you can see that he has heterochromia, eyes of blue and black, and he is already wearing a standard issue Sabres uniform. There's something missing in his expression. Like there's something was taken from him. Hey. Yeah, I'm gonna look at the agents. Agent Rook and Ed, so so this is the this is the kid you're talking about. He's he's joining our team. Shadowing the Shadowing. team. This is uh Egil. Egil Boudelaire. Um he was known as Phobia. Phobia. Wait, fear? He pulls the phone. Uh, similar to the ones that he handed out to the rest of you and opens up a data file inside there. He says, uh, he's the son of Censor. He was trained by Suter, uh, Moonen's uncle, to serve Imperium. We were, Aegis was able to intercept him. He has, and he scrolls his finger up, uh, fear manipulation, psychometry, and minor magical capabilities from what we've been able to understand. Uh, the testing that was done on him, we aren't 100% certain of yet. All right. I recommend not telling the rest of your team his lineage. He needs to learn to trust again. Naturally. Naturally. Look, this kid, he's just shadowy. You're not going to put him... He's only... He's not going on any missions. Okay, good. I imagine that's... He'd be a liability and... Yeah, we're trying to keep him safe until we can find out exactly why Sensor sent his son to be trained by the greatest assassin to serve the greatest supervillain. That's Especially fine. with powers like this. All right. So what do you want from me precisely with this kid? I want you... You're a brother. I want you to be a brother. All right. He's gonna... Uh, the kid's name is Egil, is that correct? Yeah, Egil. 
All right, so Apalaki's gonna uh, look to the doctor. Doc, is it okay if I? Approach? Yeah, yeah, everything should be fine. Uh, we're right. not reading anything. He looks at you, or she looks at you. Outside of what we already know. All right. Uh, so slowly, Apalaki goes up to Ejil, and uh, how is Ejil on the table still, or is he? Yeah, he's seated on the table. The table is back at its like horizontal okay. setting. Okay. Um, he's seated on the table. His legs are hanging over the side, uh, palms flat on his knees, sitting completely up straight with a blank face. All right. And uh, I'm going to go over to Ejil and just not directly position myself in front of him, just like a little off to the side, um, kind of like just in front but barely off uh off center and just say and uh I'm taking off my glasses yeah. this one and uh i'm gonna look back at the doctor and then agent and just give them uh okay i'll, I'll give it my best shot but you know that that look and gonna look i'm gonna look at the uh Egil and just say hey buddy you doing okay stares at you for a second and then he starts whispering it's hard to hear at first then he says you start to pick up on the dagger is important the paintings being the way the dagger is important the paintings lead the way that dagger painting Hey, kid, you, you mind? Can you, can you speak up a bit? I daggers, paintings. What's going on? He looks directly into your eyes. Um, I need you to roll to take a powerful blow. Okay. So that is two d six plus the amount of conditions you have marked currently. Okay, so I have no conditions marked, thankfully, okay. because. I did mark that uh, one of the legacy moves I'm taking, so if I have to take a powerful blow, it instead becomes never give up, never surrender. So does that still count? Yes, it does. Okay, so that means I get to roll with Savior then. Okay. Ooh, that is a seven. Five plus a two, seven. Seven. Yes. On a seven to nine, uh -huh. you lash out verbally you give ground so your opposition gets an opportunity or you struggle past the pain and mark two conditions which one would you like to do i'm sorry repeat that again uh you lash out verbally uh -huh. you give ground which means your opposition gets an opportunity on you or you struggle past the pain and you mark two conditions <sighs> i'm gonna take the two conditions okay cool um, uh See. As he ahead. looks directly into your eyes, you suddenly see the moment the arrow left the knock and pierced your sister's eyes. You suddenly see her being taken away by your father to receive medical treatment. You then see your father standing in front of the city, telling them that he is retiring and that his daughter had experienced an accident and it is being taken care of. You then see the situation that occurred the night before where your friend was injured and you did everything you could to help them. You then see your father standing in the middle of the Society of Sabres Fourier yelling at you and then it leaves. And you see him with his hands over his eyes looking down. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's 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 you're you're it's kid kid it's it's okay it, it's not you like it's it's uh, we're all dealing with a lot of stuff i i don't know what you saw but this one's not your fault this one is not your fault uh, and he hands still over his eyes the dagger is important the paintings will lead the way and he keeps his hand over his eyes 
and he turns to where Agent Ryuk is, and you see Ryuk has a gun drawn and then lowers it and pulls a pair of sunglasses out from his jacket and then slides them across the table and he puts the gun away. What are these? What what are these? That should keep that from happening. Give, okay. give him to the kid. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, I think we got up on the wrong foot, buddy. Um, listen, they tell me your name is Gage, all right. Look, they call me, you know, screw, screw the fake names here. Look, my name's Xander, kid. Look, I, I don't know, like, I, I don't know the full reason why you've been brought here. I, I, I get it. Get it? It's it's scary. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on right now, and I can't imagine what you're going through. I don't have much, but if my friend here, please don't mind all the other crap he gave, he just showed you. But what? he didn't see it. Okay, he didn't see it. Good. So hey, he handed me these. They're magic sunglasses. If you're feeling scared, if anything like that, you're seeing anything like that again. Put these on. Maybe they'll help you out. I and look. I mean, I've got my own set of lenses too. I mean, he it might keeps help. a hand over his eyes, just reaches out. And I'm, like, I'm gonna hand him the magic, the, the magic sunglasses. He takes them and immediately puts them on. Agent Let's Ryuk see. looks over. He looks at you. Good. And the kids looking you with the glasses on now. No flash, no memories. They're magic. I like that. Good, I mean, that's, that's, hey, look, again, kid, if there's one thing I can tell you right now, it's there's nobody in this building that's gonna let anything happen to you, all right? We're all here. I know we're strangers to you, but you know. uh, can I meet them? You want to meet everybody? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna look. Your at your your friends. My my friends. Yeah. Well, I I, I, I guess he they're my my friends, but points at Doctor Tierson. She's fought people. And she's not very happy. Not with me, but with what's happened. He cares. I like him. You care. I trust you. Wow, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And I want you to clear a condition. I will take... Let's see, you had me take two earlier. I never named the yeah. two I took earlier, so I'm only going to name one that I'm taking then. Is that cool? That's perfectly fine. I am definitely going to take guilty. Alrighty. Cool. And he hops off of the table and he looks at his hands for a second and then he puts his hands in his pockets. He goes, hey, Magic. Magic. That's right, buddy. Magic. <sighs> hey, uh, Agent Ryu, I mean, I know we've got the kid, but I think we got to get to a meeting, right? Yeah. Let's get to that meeting. Let's go. So we jump over to all of you in Agent Ryu's office as Kinetic has broken in. What what did you do in the office in particular, Kinetic, before everybody got to the door? Um, she would have definitely have gone into um, one of the drawers of the desk to try mm-hmm. to see what random item she could take and then hopefully make him question where... where where did I put this thing? She just wants to try to make it where he, the Agent Ryuk is 
kind of Roll wondering and looking everywhere for it. Assess the situation. Okay, awesome. Oh, 11. 11. Uh, so you get an additional question. So to answer the first one, if there's anything in the drawer that you could take or mess with okay. to So the first question it. is, what here can I use to mess with Agent mm -hmm. Luke? And then um, how best can I infuriate or provoke Agent Luke? For making in, us wait. <laughs> in the top drawer is a pair of meditation spheres. The ones that are used to move around the hand. There's a singular pair in there. I'm assuming you're gonna take just one of those? Yes, you guessed <laughs> correct. <laughs> So you take one of those and then in that same drawer there is a notepad and on that notepad says date thursday 7 p.m dress and then in quotations normal do with that as you will um she's going to try to change that time of the appointment <laughs> in in whatever way would be best as far as with it she would basically copy like kind of the the motion of like however he usually forms mm -hmm. his seven because some people it's more of a loop like kind of just yeah know, around it some it's just straight you line, know this is whatever whatever yeah so basically she would change that then to another time so she would try to probably i'm thinking like four know, four probably yeah probably four to try to make make it so then he's at the <laughs> waiting at for the time. three hours three hours yeah there we go that's a that is a wonderful way to infuriate a normally punctual agent of the government oh yeah, oh, yeah. and have him questioning why on earth did i put four when it was seven look absolutely it, it said dress normal <laughs> i i think you just fucked with his date Oh, I'm like well. the poor guy. <laughs> Even better as far he made as us kinetic wait. Is concerned. <laughs> he made us wait. Like we could be doing so much more with our time. This is his fault. Alrighty. And it is now at this point that the rest of the gathered troop from Galaxia's stash gathering comes through the door, knocking as Kinetic opens the door for everyone to come in. And shortly after that, Apalaki and Agent Ryuk with a small 14-year-old boy wearing a pair of sunglasses with his hands in his pockets, standing right next to Apalaki. Not close enough to where they're touching, but you can tell there's like a level of solidarity in where he is positioned. I see we're bringing back the sunglasses indoors. I was going to say, to school, to school for cool kid? <laughs> They're magic. Sweet. Galaxy is gonna, like, just immediately, like, once she sees that it's, like, a kid, like, Galaxy is 100% gonna just, like, float on over and probably, um, like, uh, 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 do, like, a flip along the way, just, like, spreading her stardust the whole way. It watches for a second. If you had done the rotation 0.25 seconds prior to, you would have been a lot closer to the ceiling without having to worry about avoiding it, but it's still nice. Galaxia's uh, just like, don't worry. I'm very used to avoiding ceilings. <laughs> Ryu, is this, is this your son? Uh, Ryu looks over to the rest of the group and says, Gray Sabres, meet Egil Boudelaire. He will be shadowing you while you are on ground. He will not be going on any missions with any of you. As you could tell, he's quite wait, young. Wait, wait, wait. Sh shadowing us? Yes. Like a... You're using a kit to watch us? No, I'm... 
the kid needs to learn to feel again. So you decided that it was going to be best to put him with us. Mm. Why not? Is that a joke? Mm. Nope. <laughs> you, I, don't, I don't know if you just... remember, but we are not the best role models for kids. Oh my gosh, that's so good. Galaxy is oh, just going to put her arms around the two of them and be like, look, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe what what we need is some youthful energy around here. I don't know. Ryu points, Ryu points individually. Moon and relearned humanity after he was trained by a supervillain in order to fight against everything that they stood for. He made himself who he is today. That takes courage. That takes a level of understanding in oneself more so than what they were raised to believe they are. Points of kinetic. You stand for what you stand for. It doesn't matter what it is. If you're upset, everyone knows you're upset. If you're happy, everyone knows you're happy. If you are angry, everyone knows you're angry. You feel, and you feel deeply whether you let anybody into it or not. Nyx, you spent years trying to show the world, including those around you, that you are so much more than your family believed and wanted you to become and you are doing it. Why wouldn't I want him around you? Apalaki is standing against the greatest known superhero in the world in order to prove himself against everything that's been said about him. Thresh? Don't. Then you already know the answer. And Galaxia, you've shown love to every single being that you've met cheerfully, wholeheartedly, and passionately. This is a child who doesn't have any of that. And I believe this is the best place for him to learn that. So, Ijo, these are the Grey Sabres. Grey Sabres, this is Ijo. Stop. And he's just hands in the pockets looking at everybody. He knows you really well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, girl, didn't realize it was that well. Wow. <laughs> We're his favorite test subjects. Mm -hmm. <laughs> listen, listen. Look, I, I get it. Look, everyone, it's it's left field. I, I understand. It's We're not... I, I know. You're all thinking, why are we babysitting? I get it, but... We're all the kids got right now. We we gotta be heroes, right? Being a hero means helping out and making sure you go the extra mile and taking care of it, you know, not just the cro the cro the crowds, but taking care of one. And like I said, we're all he's got right now. So look, we gotta do this. He looks at Nix. Are you were you always from here or is your are you from somewhere else am i do i know if i've always been from here um that's that's up to you have you always been here or did your family come here to save humanity in the world i believe my i think we decided that my family did come here because i'm like the barest speck of human still Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you, your whole life has been spent here, but your family is not from here at all. So I'll send, like, um, kind of similar to Galaxia Stardust, but, like, kind of my own version. Mm -hmm. Just kind of up out of my hand towards him. He's staring at it. That was nice. And then he realizes his hands are out of his pockets and immediately quickly puts his hands back into his pockets. He goes, I'm gonna rest now. It was nice to meet all of you. Magic. Hey, hey, hey kid. Uh, 
I'm I'm sure it's gonna be you know great hanging with you and look we'll get to know each other go I I'd say yeah go ahead take a breather and um, we'll we'll see you all later we'll all meet up all right take care of yourself okay I'm in and then four oh eight four oh eight and he turns and walks out of the room and then walks <sighs> down the hallway. Hey, uh, hey! I am looking neighbors. at Agent Rook right now. Neighbor. Neighbors. I am looking at Agent Rook right now. Like, um, is it? Did, did he? Just, did he just say four oh eight? Yes. Hi, girl. He's next door. It's cool. Hey, make is sure they... to keep the stuff away from that kid. Yeah. Honey, haven't been around for that long. Already know no underage. Oh. Okay, I'd hey, I had to make sure because you're like from space and shit. So I mean, I don't, you know. Trust me, it was one of the first things, first things we learned. I <laughs> then, figured like, if I just anything, nudge Nick's a little bit. <laughs> I figured if anything, if the child needed to be calmed or quelled, a person who could be a peer and calm would be the best person to have them close by. Lexi is just going to give a nice little smile. And he moves and closes the door. And for the first time, normally when he has conversations with all of you, he leaves the door wide open. Or he leaves it unhinged, unlocked, and just gives you the mission briefs or the training briefs, everything. He locks the door. And you see him move to a keypad and enter a few numbers, and you watch another door close over the main door. He says, so how about a chance of finding out exactly why they were looking for you guys? Are you serious? Boxes. Absolutely. Yeah, um, is... is is that the reason for the heightened security or? Yeah, because I shouldn't be offering you guys this mission with how close you are to all of the people involved. But with sensors showing up, I had to figure out why he was following you guys. He's following you guys because he's trying to get some more assassins working for other people. The same assassins that Moonin was trained to become and have been fighting against. And then come to find out that those assassins are being sent to who other than Imperium. They're meeting at an art gallery tonight, the three of them. Any opportunity I can get to try to slit that guy's throat? No conflict. This is information Wait, gathering serious? first. Information You're telling me gathering. after what he did to my mom, to my family, are you kidding me? We're gonna get our chance. Information first. Why is Imperium getting an army? Why is Suter providing an army? And why is Sensor playing middleman to the situation? You guys weren't even supposed to know this mission was going on, or what was, or even that they're meeting, or all three of them were going to be in the same place. But I'm going to make sure that the right names end up on the right missions for the people who deserve them. We get the information and we can do what we need to do. And when it comes to super villains, there is no excessive force when it's authorized. But information first. And if things go sideways? Get out. They can't know that you're watching. They can't know that we know they're getting together. Reconnaissance. Reconnaissance. You can go in dress clothing if you would like. You can go to an art gala, mix and mingle with the upper echelon of society. Um, I hear it's a wonderful way to meet the funding families, not the founding families, I guess is the right way to word it, of Halcyon City. 
we don't have to it's it's your call you can go in uniform stealth your way around put gadgets in place set up cameras hearing devices trackers tracers or you can mingle with the people laxia like immediately turns into like like that posh bitch you would see at an art gala <laughs> like like brunette hair like very well styled like outfit is you know like business but with like tons of personality and um yes. right you know exactly what the fuck I'm talking about um and uh and yeah Galaxia is just like oh it's full <laughs> pants it's like pantsuit nothing under the, the jacket jewelry all down the front and kinetic looks and points like hell you're gonna have me dressing like that you don't have it's to. a choice don't worry about it <laughs> personal choices half of you could go in like that the other half can watch from the roof or sneak in by other means so you're you're gonna send me back out to a location that my father's gonna be at knowing he's looking for me and is going to wreak havoc on all the things n near me just to piss me off he doesn't know that you're gonna be there because remember you guys aren't even supposed to be on this mission if he has ties this... in here the paperwork isn't gonna say you you guys are gonna be saving kittens in the middle of Atlantis, as far as anybody is concerned. I think that also sounds like a fun mission. Uh, Way better than when we had to like, help out at that senior home that time. It's not like Ben Gay and just, ugh. ugh. I mean, I don't know. It was really, really interesting, like meeting the elders of your species. I'm well, there was that one though. old dude who talked about the war and like literally seeing people get blown up. That was interesting. So do you uh, guys want the mission or not? Like, I'm already dressed for it, honey. Apalak is going to go to Thresh and just look at him and say, listen, I, I, I understand your concerns, buddy. Look. Nothing's going to happen to you. In fact, nothing's happening to anyone on this mission, all right? But we watch out for each other. We get through this. But remember, no crazy fireworks, no big stunts. We walk away if this is the case. If anything goes sour, walk away. Get to the safe house, wherever they put it, back to base. Are we cool? Thresh, we talked about this, dude. Like, this is an opportunity. Like, we may not get this opportunity again. And, I mean... It's going to be boring because we can't do what we want to do quite yet. But, I mean. You'll be good, man. <laughs> Apalaki, you are the biggest celebrity in the city. They're going to they're gonna recognize you for one for sure. And me? They are absolutely we're gonna know who I am so you and I we can't even go in we have to stay on the roof surveillance but when this shit goes sideways and it will go sideways that's on you it's fine look we gotta take risks sometimes in order to get what we need alright look you all want your shots you all want your shots at that big three alright this is how we build to that we're gonna need to take risks, but we do it together as a team. We can't do this without you, buddy. A chance to take down my old man. And censor. I need that revenge anyways. Look at Let's do it. What do you think? You're like so quiet over there. I mean, I have no issues 
with any of them. So it would make sense that I go in. I'm not going to explode on any of them. I can keep a relatively cool head around them. Oh my God, we could like, mm. we could totally be that lesbian art couple. That would be like great cover. Does this mean I have to wear a dress since you're wearing a suit? Uh, fuck those. I, I don't know about you, but we do not have those roles where I come from. I really just want to wear a dress is what I'm saying. I've been wearing this jumpsuit for weeks. <laughs> you can wear whatever makes you feel pretty. Ryuk goes into his wallet and he pulls out like three grand in hundred dollar bills and he hands it to Dix. He says, get whatever clothing you feel you need to wear oh, for the inside of this oh, whatever it is. It's covered. I you could go inside as long as it's just information gathering. Uh, darn it. Two out of 16 members. Yeah, this is gonna go great. We'll have four eyes in the sky, two on the inside. If anything goes wrong, at least the strongest ones up top will be able to keep the ones inside safe. I see it as a good idea. And even if you wanted to go inside, there's enough hollow units inside in order that they, in the the armory to disguise you, so that they wouldn't know that you're there. I'm not denying you guys the opportunity to look these guys in the face. I'm not denying you the opportunity of being able to know 100% that they are right there but I am trusting you guys to do the right thing. It's just information right now. And the next time, I will let the gloves off. We make sure they don't meet up again. I'm ready. long as you literally keep your word, man, then I'm in. So are you going in or are you staying out? I mean, I really love the fact that I could totally get three Gs, but <laughs> it just cramps my style. So I guess I'll be going in my own way, as we all know I do. I'm all for it. Thresh? Yeah, I'll be on the roof, watching and waiting. So she'll be with me. We'll we'll figure out extraction. We'll keep eyes on everybody. We'll stay out of the way. That way, everybody else can operate. But no one's going to be alone here. I have your back, my friend. Lunin. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go, Galaxia. This seems you're already dressed for the occasion. Yeah. Shia girl. Um, and Galaxia is going to look at, at Apalaki and be like, you know, though, Fresh makes a good point, but like, I'm thinking about it in a different way. And one of these days, we are going to use your popularity to our advantage. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't need the crowds right now. I, I, look, Thresh is right. It's probably best I lay low, but look, I'm not backing out of this mission and Again, Galaxia, I will take you up on that offer soon. Don't worry, but right now... I'm just letting you know that there's plenty of power in being adored. I appreciate it, but no worries. For the next one. In the meantime, we plan this out. We have extraction. We have eyes in the sky. You'll be our agents on the ground. Agent Ryuk, are we missing anything? One thing. What's next. that? Are you okay with this? Should be fine. It's going to be on YouTube to be eyes and ears inside. Let me know the things you need. If I can get a hold of them, I will. 
Ooh, I know what we do need. Do you have those things called like blueprints, layouts, you know, inside? Because that really helps me for what I do best. And he takes his phone, starts moving. Turn, never mind. And he just sends it over, and there is a sectional blueprint to the five stories of the museum with where room locations are, not what's in the rooms, but where room location, like sizes, dimensions of everything. He says, I don't have access to the basement blueprints until tonight. Ooh. Then I'll have those. But for right now, this is common access knowledge, we'll call it. This will do. I got something. Doing? Yeah, are we expected to put these on speaker and just talk to all of us, you know, or do we have another means to communicate all together? The headsets. You guys still have your training suits. I assume everybody no. has their training suits. Are you kidding me? The helmets. No, 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 no. Great. Yeah, Great no, visit. girl. I'm no. so sorry. A helmet does not work with Recon. this. Agent Ryuk, with all due respect, look, in the best interest of not drawing attention, you got to get us something better equipment. Just maybe your simple ear. I'll get pieces. something. I'll get something. All right. No, no training Any, suits. Yeah. Anybody uh, picky on color or color waves? I think black is pretty united. Yeah, of course. Galaxia's, Galaxia is going to to just kind of sit and think for a second. Still thinking about her outfit. Um, the jewelry but, is changing every once in a while and everything. Absolutely. But Galaxia is 100% going to be like, okay, so like, I know that if I put some, you know, cute little plug thing in my ear, then I'll be able to make some shimmery, turn it into jewelry or whatever. But like, we're gonna be like inside, like talking to people. Like, I don't want that to be like, super like, hey, wearing an earpiece. Oh my God, we're talking to people. Like, like, is there a way to like? But if you're important and rich, do you really care? Yeah, you see, like, we don't have money uh, where I come from. And so it's like, that's just a whole nother concept of power that I'm like still getting used to. No, no, I really don't. Um, Nick, Girl, it's you my took agent. Cosmic Sorry. energy, right? What? Nick, yeah. you took cosmic energy. Yeah. Um, I want you to roll to unleash your powers for me, real quick. The interesting idea. Ten. Ten. In that moment, you guys feel a tether form between the six of you. And there's the briefest second where you can feel where it's pulling from. Nick, you, you're now able to connect the theta, alpha, and beta waves of the brain to each member that you are connected with for them to be able to speak to each other without having to use any equipment at all. Galaxia's eyes just go super wide and she just says in all of your heads like oh my god i'm so sorry i'm going to abuse this and tell you all of the jokes at the most inappropriate times don't worry guys say, i can turn it off can i just want to say in her in her mind she's gonna be like um so nix uh all the times that i played pranks on you please don't blow my head off of my shoulder please right i'm gonna hand her the three grand and say don't worry about it Thanks, friend. You're My parents are good. 
I don't need to. One. Uh, kinetic. If you have a condition, go ahead and drop it. Oh, gracias. And Nix, do you have influence over kinetic? Yes, I think I do. Definitely, you does. do. Okay. In that moment, there was emotional connection between the two of you. So you get to drop that condition, and she would have gained influence if she didn't already have it. So Agent Reeve looks at all of you and goes, all right, I'll have the rest of the information for you guys tonight. Are you going to be making special visits? And then Kinetic winks. I'm going to be at the art gala tonight, actually. And you now realize that the date that was written on that post-it was today. I I think I still have enough time. I have to check my notes, but I'm going to have to get ready to get going here soon. I have to take this to, to the dry cleaners. I have to make sure that I don't have any firearms on me. Um, sure you know, you know what? You know, it's okay. You, you, I understand what? you were upset earlier. There's a lot of things that, that <laughs> we can't cool. handle, um, but I'm gonna get going now. You guys have, you guys rest, you earned it. Be ready tonight, roughly around seven. Yeah, I won't be here, but seven, and I'll message you on where to go and how to get to the gala itself. Rest, rest, rest. And he undoes the second security door, opens the door, and leaves. And that is where we're going to end tonight's session. For everybody watching tonight... <laughs> We are approved to continue on for a second episode with everybody. So we're going to get the infiltration of the art gala where the meeting of three supervillains are and see where that goes with the heroes question mark. Uh, so we're gonna go from my right all the way around like we did earlier, everybody, Tell everybody where you can find them, uh, where they can find you, and answer this question. Do you feel closer to the team? Do you feel further from the team? Or do you feel like you are on your own? So starting with Andy. All right, well, hello everyone. Again, thanks so much for watching. My name is Andrew J. Alandi, also known as Duralath. You can find me at twitch.tv slash Duralath. And, uh, also, uh, this coming weekend, you'll find me as one of the hosts of Anime Expo Lite, so that'll be pretty fun. Uh, so, as far as the team goes, closer, farther away, or lone wolf? You know what? This small little, uh, this small uh, experience here, meet meeting Ejil and actually conversing with the team, there is a sense of, I'm a little closer, but it's very, very small because, again, not much bonding for uh, for for our young hero, question mark. <laughs> awesome. And now moving to Lauren. I'm Lauren. You can find me at the Litter Lore for now. I'm changing my name soon, but for now is where you can find me. Um, uh, I don't really do much, but I will actually be on an Expanse stream tomorrow um, at 6 p.m. at Only Play Wizards. So it's pretty, that's a fun game. It's very, very exciting. I hope we don't die. Um, and I would say Nyx feels closer Go as she's see. awkwardly trying to forge human emotions towards these other people. Awesome. Alrighty, up next, Coral. Hello, friends. My name is Coral Reefer. You can find me at the Twitches at twitch.com slash queerventuretime. You can find me on the Twitters at twitch.com or at Twitter at Q Venture Time because Queer Venture Time is too many characters. <laughs> um, it's tea. You can also find me here uh, in the future doing very exciting things. And um, every Monday 
on my channel. We've also got a D&D uh, game. It is Queer Venture Time, The Queer Venture. Um, and uh, yeah, you can see myself and my friend Lalo, who's been hanging out here. And uh, we do all of the uh, all the fun things. Awesome. Royal. Yo, what up, you guys? You can find me at Royalty No Y. It is the word Royal, the letter T, the word No, and then the letter Y. Um, and I that's across all social media that I am available on. Um, again, I am an actor, stuntman, cosplayer, and if you're into some fun stuff with voice acting, you might see some uh, stuff from Universal that I do. And current right now, I would say most definitely close with Kinetic with this whole exchange at the end here. And I'm really happy with Apolaki coming to my side and saying that it's going to be okay. Um, knowing how I feel about being uh, discovered by my dad and the stuff that he has with his dad being the greatest uh superhero out there and so yeah i'm really happy that we're going to be continuing because there's another little secret that i'm hiding that <laughs> nobody knows about <laughs> i love it also I... known as royal did a ton of work on his face tonight that <laughs> didn't get shown, <laughs> oh, <laughs> shown. No. Dude, i didn't realize that, that was that's how your tag plays out royalty no why like that blew my mind it happened a couple months ago for me and then <laughs> i i thought i was the only one so i'm glad i'm not the only one no, <laughs> up next jimmy uh don't monk shit across hey. the internet verse um only uh streaming on here with these beautiful people that i'm with um and moonin is definitely closer to the group um he wants to have a conversation with thresh though because they kind of have like the same parallels but they're they're different oh galaxia you forgot to say if you've got closer further apart or on your own galaxia loves all of you <laughs> Galaxia, Galaxia just wants us all to be friends. <laughs> awesome. Alrighty, and last but certainly not least, Utahime. Hi guys, I'm Utahime. You can find me at, on Facebook and Instagram and here on Twitch at Utahime Cosplay and Brianna DeCosta on Twitter. Um, I am a cosplayer and streamer and overall lover of D&D and TTRPGs. So you can find me on uh, various shows like uh, this Thursday. You can catch me on the In Crowd for Lady Death Squad. Uh, and then you can catch me on every Monday um, on the Initiative Order right here, 6.30 um, for Vault and Fallout uh, TTRPG. And also to the new uh, show Evermore Tales on every other Sunday. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, it was such an awesome premiere, and um, that's going to be at 2 p.m. on Sunday. Boy, it hurt me. Oh yeah, I I was taken to an emotional place, and I was not ready for that on uh, the first first freaking episode. Um, but and of course, and I guess we're going to be coming back, and I'm excited because uh, this group is so much fun, and the presence just presented us presence. Heh, get what I did? Oh no, bad, bad dad joke. <laughs> um, of just beautiful uh, storytelling. So I appreciate all you guys watching and all the love and chat. And uh, thank you guys. And do you feel closer to the team, farther away from the team, or on your own? Um, definitely. Um, she's gaining uh, more bonds with everyone, especially since uh, Nyx did her whole uh, tebe and the the bills 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 um but uh yeah no i think that gradually it's like different things that are connecting her to each person i think that um kinetic will probably want to try to connect with apalaki because it sounds like his dad is a douche and um we want him to get those uh letterman jackets that we're going to be making soon so yes. yeah and i am the arc like port the presence will you can find me at arc like port across the entire internet I am extremely excited that we're going to be coming back for another episode uh, and hopefully more. But with everybody growing closer to the team in one way or another in our next game, you have one free re-roll on any roll. Let's go. 
So go ahead and mark that down on your sheets and we will we will get everything scheduled and squared away for the next session. Thank you guys all for coming out. Thank you, my players, for the wonderful story that we got to share with each other. You guys are awesome and amazing. And thank you, the Initiative Order, for allowing us to be able to play these games, tell these stories, and spend time together. You guys have a wonderful night. See ya. <laughs>